There are a lot of cool builds to play in Grim Dawn, a lot of skills to try out, a lot of sets to equip, there's so many different ways to play, and then a bunch of mods for when you think you're done with the game. If you're interested in trying out a lot of these different things, you're going to have to level up quite a few characters, like I have been for the last few weeks. It can take a lot of time if not done efficiently, which is fine if you just want to explore the world and have fun at your own pace, but it can be a little bit frustrating for a lot of people who want to just get to the end game as quick as possible. In this video, I'd like to go over a lot of simple tips for leveling smoothly, especially for the very very early parts of the game that usually can drag on. This is mainly directed towards newer players, but perhaps there's something in here if you even are a veteran. Starting with the very beginning of the game, after you accept John Bourbon's quest, you have to kill a bunch of zombies with your basic attack before you can even level up to get a skill point. There is a note right next to the bridge that looks like you can't pick it up, but you actually can, and once you read that you'll get a chunk of XP that means you'll be basic attacking a lot less zombies to get that skill point that you desperately need. Another really important thing about the lower crossing are three different unique level 1 weapons hidden in dead bodies throughout three different buildings, in the same spot every playthrough. There's Francis's gun in one of the very first buildings, the one-handed pistol with a chance to throw a fireball on attacks, Hevel's greatsword in this building, the slow two-handed sword with a lightning sphere proc on attack, and then Ullman's axe in this building, a fast one-handed axe with an ice spike attack. These items are way better than the common shiv that you start off with obviously, and will probably be much better than many of the weapons that monsters drop for at least 5 more levels depending on how lucky you are. There's also technically a shield you can get, it's much less important, but you can get it on a 100% drop chance from Pusquil the Hoarder in the Putrid Den, a hidden cave that has 3 random spawn locations in the old Tomp. Now that you have a starter weapon set up, it's time to get your starter skill. It's important to pick an area of effect skill that's available early in the tree with very little to no cooldown, and then invest most if not all of your skill points into it. This skill doesn't have to be your build for your character's entire career, but it can be used as a clutch to level up with and then very quickly respec into your actual build. Putting a lot of points into one skill early can make the leveling experience just ridiculously easy. Examples of skills like this include Nightblade's Amarasa's Blade Burst, Shaman's Primal Strike, Arcanist Flash Freeze, Soldier's Force Wave, and Inquisitor's Word of Pain. One thing about putting all of your points into one skill early is that you might have a lot of trouble sustaining that increased energy cost, which is why energy regeneration is so important on gear. We'll talk more specifically about gearing your character later in the video. But unfortunately, there's no option for energy regen in the loot filter, so you'll just have to keep an eye out for it on dropped items. Also, the ectoplasm component commonly dropped by Ghost in Act 2 will make your energy problems a lot easier to deal with. Progression and exploration are heavily tied together in this game, most notably with the devotion shrines literally giving you power for finding them, and also from the one-shot chest hidden all over the world. If you don't know what a one-shot chest is, it's the exalted stashes that you may have found previously. Most of them are in the same spots every single playthrough, and can only be opened once per character, have a guaranteed epic item on top of its normal good loot. If it's your first time playing through Grim Dawn, I'd highly suggest just exploring the world to find the stuff yourself, since it's a super fun part of the game, and there's actually a few quests and notes that tell you exactly the locations of these one-shot chests, so it's actually integrated into the game's story. But if you just want to speed through the game and don't have all this stuff memorized, the Grim Tools Checklist is an amazing tool that you can use. Grim Tools is already an amazing third party website with a bunch of super useful tools like a build calculator, a database for items, monsters, pets, a world map, and this checklist that we're talking about right now. I'll leave a link to this website in the description below. This checklist gives you the location of, of every shrine and every one shot chest in every difficulty. You can either start off a fresh empty one as you create your character and check these off as you go, or you can even import your save file to automatically check off everything that you've already found on that character. You probably don't want to rely on this for your entire Grimdon playthrough, but it is super helpful for new players, especially in the early game when you're trying to get a whole bunch of epic items set up, or anybody that can't memorize the location of over 200 important things. Another thing you can do in Grim Tools is check out the item database for monster infrequence that you can farm for yourself. 
Just type in the main skill that you're using and filter rare items to see what's available. Monster and Frequents are an item type that can drop from a specific monster. You can click on their name to see where they spawn, usually affecting skills in unique and powerful ways, or just giving some very solid stats. The most recent patch has made it much more likely to get well rolled monster and frequents, and added a whole bunch of new ones from low level bosses, so I'd say right now it's very worth it to do a few runs of the certain area with that certain mob for that certain item that will increase your power by a ton. You can also just search literally any stat that you need for monster and frequents. Like I said earlier, energy regeneration is super important, but you can use this method to search for literally any stat that you want, like offensive ability or health, since these items are all target farmable and now easier than ever for you to get. On the topic of items, you'll probably want to edit your loot filter as soon as possible to avoid wasting time scavenging through every terrible item that drops. What I like to do right when I start is take off all my common equipment except for the weapon at the beginning, and then turn off common items on the loot filter since they are pretty much useless all the way throughout the game. Once I hit level 3 or so and discover my build's identity, I turn off the weapon types except for the ones that I'm using. I keep everything else unchecked because I'm desperately looking for energy regeneration and it would be a shame if something drops and it doesn't show it to me because of this loot filter. And I also want to sell every single item that I'm picking up at this point so I can search the shop for the stats that I desperately need. Only around level 10 or once I feel powerful enough, I check off every type of damage that I'm trying to scale and resistances, occasionally checking off and on offensive or defensive ability as I need it. With this loot filter setup, you'll be shown items that have your damage type or resistances, not both. And of course, resistances are super important if you don't want to die because dying is pretty frustrating. It, you have to walk all the way back, you lose some experience, and if you're playing hardcore, you just completely lose your character. And offensive slash defensive ability can cause big problems if left too low. You have to mouse over these stats on your character sheet to see your chances to hit and crit or to be hit and crit and make sure they are not getting out of control. At some point, I like to turn off magic items as well. They are pretty useless near Act 2 or so, and I'd much rather have rares or epics equipped. What I like to do is pick up every item dropped by this loot filter. You can press A to spam pick up items if you want to go really fast. Then I sell them to the shop and then I search the buy back tab for whatever resistances or whatever stats that I'm currently lacking, since you can just buy back the item for the exact same price you just sold it for. And if you're really having trouble with resistances or survivability on your gear, you can do some of the double crossings bounties for respected status in which their shop will sell some pretty solid gear for most builds. It's not really worth it if you're trying to go really fast, but if you're like a newer player and you're having trouble surviving, this can be a good clutch for you. Also, one more quick thing, don't be afraid to use the Crucible while leveling. A few runs of this DLC arena around level 5 to 10 will give you so much more loot and experience that you could ever hope for in the campaign. And even in the worst case scenario, you can sell everything from that huge loot explosion to get enough iron to craft a bunch of stuff or to fix the bridges to progress.